prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and to the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters Christ, ask yourself, do you honestly believe that the good Lord looks down on the earth and says, it, it, it's, it's a million to one shot. Oh my, me. It's a million to one. Peter, get Thomas. You're not going to believe this. If I hadn't been standing, I wouldn't have seen it. No such thing. Everything happens as he wills it. And the fact is, the problem is you and I don't pick up on it. Therein lies the issue. So there's no coincidence that you're here. You're here to understand, to learn a little bit more about the Holy Mother. And who better to speak than, obviously, uh, Patricia Williams herself, right? Just so you get to know her. My brother and sister in Christ, this is what you and I know about Mary from Scripture. These are the things that you and I know. We do know, my brother and sister in Christ, that when the angel appeared to her, that is the same angel Gabriel that appeared to Daniel. It's also the same angel that appeared to Zechariah, the high priest. She is 14 years of age, my brother and sister in Christ. And when the angel appears to her, remember, she is betrothed to Joseph. In their world, you are legally married. In that, if Joseph is to die, she is a widower. So for her to respond to the angel, how can it be that the Holy Spirit will overshadow me? How can it be since I do not know man? If you're already, quote, engaged in their world, legally married, and you have one year, he has one year to get his house in order, literally, then you're going to consummate the marriage. The only way that she can speak publicly that this is true, and according to the Jewish world, he has to agree to it. She couldn't have spoken it if he doesn't agree to it. Listen to what I'm telling you. Back in the day, remember, they only counted the men. Therefore, whatever he says was going to go. So for her to say it, they've already had to agree to it. Remember, when the Holy Spirit overshadows her, the same word that they use for Holy Spirit and overshadow is the same word they use for the glory cloud that would come down in the desert. So Mary knows what is coming. Isn't it amazing to you that an angel appears to Mary at 14 and she's wondering in her heart what this has to do? What does it have to mean? In other words, my brother Christ, she even asked the angel, how can this be? Why is it that Mary asked the question, how can this be? Zechariah asked the same question when the angel appeared to her, him in the, in, the, uh, in the temple. Do you know it's the incense hour? Yeah. That means he would have been the only priest there. His job was to make sure and incense the tabernacle, which is why we incense today to make you cough, right? Just so you know why we do what we do, right? My brother in Christ, he says the exact same thing and he's muted for nine months. The problem is he had a little attitude with it. Therein lies the difference. This is why Mary, the, that's why the angel, you know the angel doesn't say, I tell you what, you're good Catholics. What does the angel say? Hail. That's right. He calls her by her title, not by her name. In other words, he's speaking past tense. You are full of grace from the minute of your inception, immaculate conception. You're full of grace as I'm standing here before you. You'll be full of grace when you're betrothed to Joseph. That means you'll be full of grace even when you assumed into heaven because only death enters you through sin. And since you have no sin, death cannot enter. He, she cannot have relations with Joseph because Joseph has original sin, which means she would have original sin, which means the angel lied. My brother says, Christ, angels have free will and free will one time and one time only. Don't ever forget that. On day one, God created the... Okay, for the six people that are good Catholics, they got it. <laughs> God created the light. Those are the angels. Lucifer is called the angel of... They, got, they, they immediately have to decide, I will either worship him in heaven or I will rule in hell. Once he makes his decision, he can never go back. From that point on, he'll be a liar forever. Michael will always tell the truth. 
Why do I tell you these things? So when the angel calls her by her title and not by her name, it's to tell you where she sits in the world. Now, my brother and sister in Christ, her last words in Scripture, do whatever he tells you. The wedding of Cana. My brother and sister in Christ, think about that. We never hear her speak anymore in Scripture. We never hear him speak at all. Whenever you hear that Mary did not have relations with Joseph until she bore him a child, please remember, you got to go back to their world. Christ is a Jew. His mother's Jewish. His stepfather is Jewish. He's circumcised as a Jew. He's crucified as a Jew. He's the king of the Jews. If you study Christ, you got to study him as a Jew. You can't study him in English. That's why we have 40,000 faiths in the world today. Everybody has their own interpretation. My brother and sister Christ, this is why it's so important you understand. When he said the word that she did not have relations with Jesus until she bore him a child. Implying in your my language that relations would forthcoming. But Merlin Christ, I will be with you until the end of time. Are you assuming that I'm not going to be there after time? My brother and sister Christ, the Greek word for them is heos, which means nothing changes. I'm just using that as a marker for you to pay attention to. Anything beyond it is irrelevant. My brother in Christ, you need to understand this. You need to understand what our teachers that have taught us, like our saints, like Anselm, Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, St. Catherine Emmerich, St. Mary of Agrita, Blessed Maria Voltorta. All these people speak to the life of Mary. Now, this is what you and I are not told, so that you can have a better feel for her. We believe, my brother in Christ, that she is born, obviously, um, through parents, through the natural way. But just like the good Lord protected John the Baptist, even though he was born with original sin, he doesn't come into the world with original sin. You understand what I'm saying? Please make sure you understand that. In other words, in the womb, John the Baptist has original sin. But once he dances in the womb, then the sin is removed. Hence why he's dancing, my brother and sister in Christ. Right? That's, I'll, I'll come back to you. I don't want to lose you. There's another person in Scripture that was born without original sin, came into the world without it, and that's Samson. You need to know that. Everything happens in the Old Testament has to happen in the New. Has to happen in the New. So if it happens over here, it's got to show up over here. Why is this important to you and I? My brother and sister Christ, you need to understand that she's the Immaculate Conception. We believe at her birth, she has infused knowledge. You and I have learned knowledge. And if you went to school here in Louisiana, you have less than learned knowledge. <laughs> I would like to say I'm a product of that. <laughs> my father would tell you college was the best 10 years of my life, and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you need to understand she's born with infused knowledge so that she can speak at birth, she can walk at birth, she chooses not to. Why? What does that do? It drinks, draws attention. By the age of two, she's already helping the poor. She's already teaching her mother how to pray. At the age of four, she goes into the temple. And according to Mary of Agrita and Catherine Emmerich, man, it was the hardest thing parents could do to bring their four-year-old to a temple knowing that they would not see her again. Her mom, her mom does know that she is now going to be the mother of the Messiah. She doesn't know until about Mary's about eight or nine. She just knows that her child is going to be something special. She doesn't know per se at that age when you bring her to temple that she's going to be the mother of the Messiah. Joseph, excuse me, the dad does not know either. He does not know either. It's not until they're eight or nine when they are told that she will be the mother of the Messiah. Mary already knows by that time. She thinks that she's just there to see who the Messiah is going to be with. She does not think it is her. She will stay there until she's 13 or 14. This is when the high priest comes and tells her that she will be betrothed to Joseph. How do they know to pick Joseph? Because Joseph has a staff that flowers. That's where we get it from. It just doesn't look good with statues. There's a reason why he's holding that. Right? And if you actually go back to the Old Testament and you go back to Aaron the priest, how does Moses know to pick Aaron? His staff flowers to be the protector of the tabernacle. Who better to protect the tabernacle than Joseph? My brother Christ, we believe he was 33 years of age when he was betrothed to Mary. We do not believe that he was married before, even though that's a common misconception. 
We believe at the end of the day that Adam was created at the year of 33. That's why Christ dies at what age? Do we believe that when you return back to heaven, for those of us who make it, ah, yeah, right? We believe that's the age. You revert to 33. Everything to a Jew is, has numbers tied to it, right? This is why it's important that you understand that. So they are betrothed. They will live. He, she will, uh, Christ, Joseph will die at 29. When Christ is 29, Joseph will pass. And as a result of his passing, then he goes on his public mission, right? The wedding of Cana, etc. Mary will live for 15 years after his departure. And as a result of it, she is the one that instituted the creed that you and I pray. She is the one that went to the apostles. Before I depart, in this tradition, right, uh, Mary's about to depart. She sends, according to the saints, her angels to each of the apostles and telling them to return back before she goes so she can give the blessing. Who is the one apostle, according to the tradition, did not make it back in time? For a new car. <laughs> you can take anybody's car in that parking lot. Y'all got it right over there. Who is the one apostle that doesn't make it? There you go, man. Free car, go pick one. <laughs> right? The price you pay for being a doubter. Right? She asked each of the apostles to come up with one immutable truth. Twelve apostles, twelve lines. That's why we have the creed. Each line delineated by the apostles said it. You can look in your pew and it will be written right there in front of you. Right? That's important. That's why we pray the creed here at St. Helena. We, pray, we don't pray the, the Nicene Creed, the one that's real long. You know why? Because of you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and then I'll just stop. And this is what y'all do. In Jesus Christ, is only son. <laughs> Not a word. I hear nothing. But if you learn the creed, and no matter where you go, and they say, tell me what you Catholics believe. Give them the creed. That's it. That's everything. Total and complete. My brother and sister Christ, she's the one that institutes that. She's the one that returns to the Last Supper with John. That's why I ask everybody to kneel while I'm cleaning the altar. We sing the, the, the words of the song, Holy Mother, written by Eric Clapton and Pavarotti. If you ever get a chance to hear a beautiful Marian song, please listen to that. It's called Holy Mother. Eric Clapton wrote it. He used the word, I cursed your name a thousand times. He asked Pavarotti to sing it with him. He said, I'll sing it with him, but we're going to say, I called your name a thousand times. The reason we pray it during the mass, during the, the clean of the altar, is because it was John and Mary who returned to the altar. It's hence why I ask everybody to kneel. Because let's be honest, why would you be seated while he's still on the altar? His fragments, his bread, his body, right? Mary's more influential than you want to give her credit. My brother in Christ, remember this, in the book of Genesis... The devil is striking at her heel and her heel at his head. The fight on this earth is not so much between God, he created the world by thought, and the evil one. The fight on this earth is full of grace versus full of evil. Well, you can't see him behind that flower, but he's there, okay? The point being is, that's the fight on this earth. This is why he's so, this is why the, why is the devil so mad? Because he's mad because a lowly handmaid was chosen. What causes him to fall on day one? It's not God the Father. That's self-evident. Can't be God the Son. Can't be the Holy Spirit. They're God. So he's upset because he's not number four. He finds out he's number five. And that you will bend a knee to a woman. That is what God is goat. That is what sends him to the, to the earth. And that's why he hates you with a passion especially you women, because it's a remembrance of the Blessed Mother. And you know what? If he gets you, and look, I ain't discounting Papa. Hang on a second. Don't, don't run off yet. If he gets you, Mama, he's getting everybody behind you. Don't tell me that ain't going to happen. Mama don't pray, nobody prays. Mama don't go to Mass, nobody goes to Mass. Man, we could be in Disney World. Life's great. I mean, how many times have people come? Man, Father, I, I <laughs> man, I, did you go to Mass? Well, Father, let me explain. Well, I got all day, 100 people waiting, but take your time. 
And don't get all mad, okay, when you go to confession because the person in front of you is taking too long. Now you're committing to sin as you wait to tell me your sins. So please, stop. Okay? It could be worse. You would have to listen to it. Now I'll swap places with me. You go to Disney World. Man, Father, I had in-laws, outlaws, kids. I'm telling you, I need a vacation. My vacation. I said, I'm asking you. You find Cinderella's Castle? Well, yeah, Father. Should have found the church. That's on you. My brother and sister in Christ... If you women do not learn that no matter how mad you get and how incensed, Father, I'm praying for my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, this and that and the job and this and my husband and my spouse. Man, if I, man, Father, look, I'm praying for, look, look what good it does. He can't get out of the woods. He can't spell the woods. This one's in trouble. Look, we got another child. We got this. We got drugs. We got alcohol. I tell you what, stop praying. Now, now we'll find out where bottom's at. You only think they're at bottom. You kept them from falling all the rest of the way. Man, you're so mad you could spit. Spit? Now get back in the game and start praying. You burn them bees. Poor prayer praise has been prayed nonetheless. Because I'm going to tell you, you're the one that's keeping it. And when daddy ever gets his game on and decides that he's going to pray with you, now this is what the good Lord had envisioned. This is what the blessed mother is after. My brother and sister in Christ, I, we need you. We're not going to win the fight without you. I need you women and men to come together, and y'all need to learn to pray together as one. You need to understand how valuable your powers are as the prayers as one. Look, Mother Teresa was right in so many ways, but not the least of which, she said, when you want to pray for your son, your daughter, why don't y'all two get together and pray one prayer in the morning together, the memorari. Maybe you can pray a rosary. But you give up one thing. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you and I do not learn how to sacrifice and fast, your prayers are not strong enough. What does he tell Peter in the Acts of the Apostles? He says, Peter, your prayers are not strong enough. The vicar of Christ, his prayers are not... Well, <laughs> what is it, where's the rest of us then? You know what he's telling Peter? You don't know how to fast and abstain. He said, Lord, I couldn't get rid of two demons. Pride, anger, gluttony, lust, avarice, sloth, and envy. He said, I couldn't get rid of two of them. He said, because you don't fast and you don't pray. It's just words, Peter. I need you to give a sacrifice with your words to show me that you're all in. You and I can pray. We can walk outside, right? We can do a prayer right now. The difference between us praying right now and us praying the sacrifice of the Mass is the sacrifice of the Mass. Mother said, if you would run in 10-day increments for nine days, you and your husband or you and your wife have decided that you're going to give up one thing today, no cold drinks. We're going to give up uh, no sweets today. We're only going to eat one meal. We're only going to eat two meals. We're going to, we're going to stop watching the news. Okay, wait, stop that. That, that, ain't, that ain't even a penance. You ought to be thanking God you're not watching the news. <laughs> you give up one issue. You make one prayer together. And for nine days... You're in the hunt for one issue, not 10 issues. Oh, by the way, add it to this one. Oh, wait a minute, don't forget this one. Uh-uh, one issue. You're going after one dog. You're going for nine days, and every day you're coming up with a different sacrifice. On the 10th day, you say your prayer again, you offer your sacrifice, and all you say is thank you. Watch the world turn different for you now. I promise you, it will move mountains. You've got to be willing to offer sacrifice. You've got to be willing to fast. I live in 10-day increments. It's gotten so bad now, I don't even get in 10 days. I just do it every day. Every day I got a new sacrifice. It could be a cold drink. It could be this. It could be that. It could be a meal. Whatever it is, every day gets one sacrifice. So my prayers don't go just words. I need you to understand how powerful fasting is. My brother and sister Christ, do you know that the Holy Family, they lived on the rule, they lived on the, what they call it? They call it the one-third rule. This is their rule, according to the saints. They will give one-third of their food away, one-third of their money away to the poor. They give one-third to the church. They One-third to the church. Got, okay, good. make sure y'all got that. <laughs> yeah, y'all just kind of gloss right over that. You know, you want to know Scripture, but you don't want to know nothing about 10%, but I digress. <laughs> they live off of one-third. That's how they lived their life. They said Mary would play prostrate on the ground in the form of a crucifix all the time. 
Their house was a 10 by 10 room. She lived in one room. Joseph would live in the, quote, the other room. Do you know how Joseph made his money? He was a carpenter by trade. His dad dies young. As a result of, we believe he's the middle child of six, of five. As a result, he's decided that he just, he wants to be a carpenter. He meets another man later on who helps teach him the carpenter. So if you go back in scripture and you look at the genealogies of Christ, just so you understand this, you're going to see two different names for the, for the dad of Joseph. Like, I think it's Eli and Jacob, I think. Those are not, they didn't get it wrong. It's what perspective are they looking at before or after his parents. This is where that's going. He learns to be a carpenter. This is how it worked. You want a table? He builds a table. He brings it to you. And then you tell him what you want to pay for it. How long would you and I last? We probably wouldn't get past the first sale after we bludgeoned somebody to death for not giving us what we thought was fair. That's how he lived. Do you know he only has one sin, just original sin? We call him protos dilia. Protos meaning dominant, being the first. She is full of grace. He's proto, full of grace, Delia. He's protos Delia. Then John the Baptist, then all the other saints. He's far more ranking than we give him his due. My brother and sister in Christ, there's no doubt in the world the good Lord made him special to be protector and the provider. Remember this. King David hears that the tabernacle has showed up in the hills of Judah. The tabernacle. The one Indiana Jones found, it's now the government has. <laughs> the one the government has. Isn't that an ironic thing to say? My brother and sister Christ, in the tabernacle are three things. What are they? Manna, Ten Commandments, and the Staff of Aaron. This is important. Everything is a foretelling of what is to come. He runs to the hills of Judah. He begins to dance in front of the tabernacle. And then says, how could it be that the mother, the Ark of the Covenant come to me? Now stop. A thousand years go by. Mary catches wind. Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. She goes to the exact same spot, the hills of Judah. When she walks into the room at her greeting, the baby begins to dance in her womb. And then Elizabeth says the almost exact same words. How could it be that the Ark of the Covenant come to me? The tabernacle is not the Ten Commandments. It's the Word made flesh. It's not the, it's not the manna from heaven. It's the bread of life. It's not the staff of Aaron. It's the high priest himself. She's the new tabernacle. That's why you and I can't find it. She's the new tabernacle. This is why our church is female. This is why we say Holy Mother Church. This is why, indirectly, the priesthood is male. Because it's a union. It's a marriage. It's got to procreate. It's a calling. It has nothing to do with holiness. My God, my Lord, my God. You don't think, Mother, Mother, and Sister Christ, when Sister Dulce comes, or that if you had other sisters that I know where Mary miracles are tied to them, you don't think when they come to the altar, I just don't want to hand them the, and say, take what you want. Man, if I did that to Sister Dulce, she would have been in my ear all day long. <laughs> my brother and sister in Christ, you need to understand the power of what I'm trying to tell you. I need you to understand how powerful it is that y'all need to learn to pray as one. You need to pray as one couple. You need to learn to fast and abstain. This isn't something that you can just pick up later and just do it whenever you feel like you want to do. The time to do it is now. Our world is spinning well out of control. Surely I do not have to tell you that. We have the same management that was in charge last year as this year. And the results are going to get better. No way, no how. It doesn't matter. I do not care, per se, what the pontiff says or doesn't say. All I care about is you. That's all that matters. You know the truth. You know that you've got to receive the communion. You can't have mortal sin on your soul. I don't care whether or not somebody flew all the way to Rome just to get the communion, just so he could say he could. That's between him, the pontiff, more importantly, with the Messiah himself. My brothers in Christ, it's all about you and your family. If your name is not written in that book of life, then that's it. There is no book of death. The rich man that steps over Lazarus. Why is it that we don't know his name? Because there is no book of death. There's only a book of life. The gates to heaven are small. The gates to hell are large. This is why I want you to make sure that you go to confession. Stop thinking you can go directly to the big guy. He never said that. My brother Christ, if I were to ask you, was confession in play before Christ hit the earth? December 25th, 
second one of minute one of hour one of day one. Was confessions in play? Absolutely. Leviticus 4, 5, and 6. You would have to bring your animal, depending on the size of your sin. Oh, grab this. Depending on the size of your sin. Turtle dove, goat, a bull, right? Walk through town with a bull. Wonder what people think of you now. Might be better served giving it to you, better be better served giving it to your family. Take the bull in. I'll be in with you in a minute. Here's the skinny. You had to publicly proclaim your sins. So why is it, Hebrews 5, I would choose priest among men for the forgiveness of sins. No one is to take it upon themselves. But I hear you all the time tell me, well, I go to directly to the big guy. He never heard one baptism, never did one, never heard one confession. So why is it that we now all of a sudden can just step in his shoes and dictate his terms? Go to confession, throw up, and walk away. Why are you couching this? My brother, sister Christ, do you honestly believe that the priests get together and, man, and when they see you coming? <laughs> piece of work. <laughs> really? I got my own set of sins. And do me a favor. If you go to confession, I give you penance. Don't text me later saying, what was my penance? Do you know what I started doing? Say, read the entire Bible. Nobody texts me no more. Right? What I want you to do is just go. I want you to get the mortal sin off your back. Man, life's good. Don't let the devil get in your head. Remember, three people could put thoughts in your head. He can. You and I can. And so can he. You've been sitting in mass. Life is good. Out of nowhere, a, cross shoots, a thought shoots across your head, and you're thinking, I wasn't even on that page. Who do you think it came from? Somebody sends you a text message, an email, this, that, or the other. Man, next thing you know, oh, really? I got you. You read into it. Man, you hit that send button. My brother Christ, be careful. The eighth commandment is the one that you and I trample more than any other. Bearing false witness, which means you're not a true witness to Jesus Christ, which means you're not loving your neighbor as yourself, but you proclaim to be so, but when that email, Facebook, Facebook, can I just tell you to let it go? Because what they call it is the, is the sin of detraction, where you steal somebody's honor, and you say, why, well, let me tell you about that piece of work. Congratulations, you hit sin, you just bought mortal sin, now you can't receive. You know the problem is, is that we're not telling you the rest of the story. We, our priesthood is fractured, so you're getting different views depending on where you're going. The fact of the matter is, my brother and sister in Christ, I'm telling you, you either you got to learn to start pre-shopping or doing what you got to do. You need to get fed. The world's moving too fast. We're in too much trouble. It's not going to get better just because. It's football season. It's not going to get better because LSU won more games than we lost. Thank you. That is a miracle in and of itself this year. Okay? Right? So I'm telling you, you need to make time to go to confession. My brothers in Christ, make sure you go to Mass. Make sure you receive the Eucharist. You got to do what you got to do. Go to confession. And look, and do me a favor. You can take it in the hand. You can take it uh, on the tongue. You can take it any way you want. But I got to tell you, I know, we know as a priesthood, that y'all like to talk about priests. Oh, but you do. But here's the irony. We like talking about you. <laughs> and you know, on a side note, do you know how we know you? It's on how you receive communion. Oh, oh, but we do. See, see, when you come to communion, we can always say, did you get the body snatcher? Yeah, I got him. That's the one body of Christ. Boop, it's out of your hand. You ain't even got, you're thinking, man, they just snatched it right out of my hands. We have the swing set man. He comes up like this. So you just got to wait for him. Got, gotcha. We got the elevator man that starts here, drops here, and arbitrarily comes up at the most inappropriate time and shoots the host out. Right? And we have multiple personality man. Right? That's how we know you. Okay? My brother and sister in Christ, Man, I got to tell you, every, regardless of where we walk in life, priests love the church, by and large. We all want to do what's right. Nobody walks into a thing saying, man, how can we make this just tumultuous for everybody involved? You do it because you love the church. 
I went to Medjugorje to disprove it. Bang up job I did, <laughs> right? I mean, I spent my entire life chasing women wearing dresses, and now I wear one all the time. It's the height of irony. But I got to tell you, when the Blessed Mother touches you, man, you just know it. It's clear. Man, you got to have enough courage when somebody comes to you and says, would you lead us in prayer today? Will you break out that sign of the cross clearly and distinctly? Or you give them one of these? True story. I go to Eaton Baton Rouge. It's been a long time. Friends of mine from high school. Father, uh, Matt, Beard, you coming through? Brother Beard. Now I know where they sit, right? He said, man, can you join us for, for dinner? I said, great, man, right? I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen him since high school. We get out and one of them says, man, man, let, let me do the prayer. <laughs> and I'm thinking, Lord, he's going to pray, <laughs> right? He was the biggest pagan in the world in high school, right? He gives me one of these. I said, what? What is that? I said, you, is that steal second, lay down a bunt, hit and run? What is that? What is that signal? Man, clearly and distinctly. Remember the prophet Daniel, the prophet Ezekiel, the one that gave us this painting. He's the one that said the sign of the cross in your forehead will save you. Tau, T-A-U. That's why we put ashes on your forehead. So you got to make sure you make that sign of the cross clearly and distinctly. Will you break out the Hail Mary? Oh, I see. You don't want to offend anybody, which means you have no problems offending her or her son. My brother and sister Christ, you got to learn how to defend our faith. You got to do what you got to do. She is a powerful intercessor. Nowhere in Scripture did Christ ever say, "Only the person in front of you, only the person in front of you, can pray for you." He never said that. I'm the God of the living, not of the dead. My brother and sister in Christ, at the wedding of Cana, you don't think it's ironic that they've been there one week? We don't even know the name of the couple, and it's been 2,000 years. It's so important Christ be there. We don't know the name of the couple, and now you want to know why you have to get married physically in front of him and not on the beach, not in an antebellum home, not in somebody's garden? Yes, he's omnipresent, but he's only physically present there. Look, he showed up to get baptized today, Feast of the Baptism. Have you ever seen the Jordan? Could you pick a more polluted river to get baptized in? Okay, but he did. He showed up incarnationally. He shows up at a wedding for seven days. My brother in Christ, man, the miracles, there's always a miracle behind the miracle. Those six jars, right? You remember there are six jars? Those are the hand-washing and foot-washing jars. Nobody's putting wine in those jars. What a huge, colossal blunder. He did it because he doesn't want anybody saying, oh, oh you, you manipulated it. My brother said, Christ, do you know he's the seventh jar? Do you know six to the Jews is the most incomplete number in the world? That's why he's the seventh jar. That's why he says, my hour's not yet come. When I believe from my side, I'm the seventh jar. I'm the seventh light of the world. That's why there's six candles next to the tabernacle. Because he's the seventh. My brother says, Christ, you see what I'm saying? There's always a miracle behind the miracle. You just got to look for it. And if his mother doesn't do it, he doesn't go public. That's why he calls her woman. Look, if I go public, Mom, you're going to be the new Eve, and I'm going to be the new Adam. That's why he responds, woman. Woman, what does that have to do with me? Careful what you ask. I will do whatever you ask. Do you know what's amazing? John the Baptist gets blessed in the womb because of Mary's intercession. It's at Mary's greeting that the baby leaps in the womb. First intercessory prayer. I'm telling you, the power of the Blessed Mother is more than you could ever imagine. I remember asking my spiritual director, Monsignor Essef, Monsignor, my, my devotion to the Blessed Mother is great. Sometimes I worry that it's too great, that somehow or another it would be offensive to him. She would never allow it. I thought that was a great answer. So what I'm telling you is I need you to stay the course. I need you to understand our faith. I need you to learn our faith. It's never too late. It's all about your soul. Your name is either in the book of life or it is not. What is your rule of life? How do you live your life? Whether you're in Disneyland, I don't care, Dolly World, I don't care where you go. Or you go into Mass. Do not allow the situation, listen to me, never allow the situation to destroy your destination. It's heaven. Non-negotiable. You and I got to make it to heaven. My brother's Christ, on the nanosecond that you and I die, the nanosecond that you and I die, 
judgment has taken place, it's all over. While you and I are around the hospital bed, while you and I are negotiating who gets the golf clubs, who gets this, who gets that, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Judgment's already done, it's over. You need to have a mass for your family members. The good Lord said it great. Augustine was right. God is past tense, present tense, and future tense. So if you die on this day, and you're going to have a mass said three or four days later, he will use the mass to offset your judgment. Once, it, once you die, there's no more mercy. Mercy is between the day you came in the world and the day you go home. That's why we have confession. That's why I want you to go. That's why I want you to go and throw up. I don't care if you priest shop. For the love of God, go to a priest. Do yourself a favor. If you're, in, in, when you, got, you know, you got, we got, the light is on, six guys are up here, right, more or less. Can I, do, can I just ask you a favor? When you priest shop, can you not be so conspicuous? I had one lady literally walked up and went, oh, no, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> I wanted to stand up and say, uh-uh, oh, kick her back in line. That's uh-uh, uh-uh, that's coming this way. Right? I got to hear this, right? Man, I just need you to go. I need you to cut it loose and let it go. And look, don't tell me, oh, Father, I, I, I don't have any sins. You got one now. Don't tell me, oh man, Father, I commit the same sins over and over again. What you want, new ones? Stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> what I need you to do is go to confession, receive the sacraments. Make sure you go to adoration. Fast every day. Just a little thing, y'all, just to make sure you make it. Amen? Amen. All right. My brother and sister in Christ, what time do we have? 1041. Okay, before, I, before I, we, we take a quick break, is there any questions that you have about our faith. Don't tell me you don't have them. Because let me tell you why. If I don't answer the questions, then you don't move along, then you don't get to where you need to be. That's important to me that you understand. Yes. Why did the stone had to be rolled away? At the, you mean at the death of Christ? Well, well, first of all, we're not really sure. They, we believe he moved it. Right? Tell you something very slick, right? I love how the good Lord works. Here's where she's going with it. Or where I think she's going with it. In the tomb, did you ever notice that the shroud's in one place and the burial napkin's in another place? Every Jew should have walked in and go, okay, we got a problem. Because the only way you could have moved the the death mask over there is you had to walk it. And the only person that could have walked it is God, then somebody's going to wake up and say, wait a minute, didn't he say on the cross, I commend my spirit to you? In other words, he said death can come in now. Death doesn't overtake him like he does you and I. He dictated death comes now. So what I'm telling you is, this is why, let me explain. I'll, don't let me forget where you are, sister. Because I'll run right off the reservation. Okay, here's the problem. <laughs> Lazarus is dead. The good Lord has been waiting two days. They're, in, they're out in the woods. Everybody forgets this, but it is Thomas who says, Lord, I know you want to go back to Lazarus, but that's in the heart of the city. You're going to get stoned, but I will go and die with you. <laughs> no, doubting, doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas. Nobody remembers that part of his conversation. My brother in Christ, he waits till four days. You ever notice that? You know why he waited four days? Because up until the third day, the Jews believe you could resuscitate. He wants to make sure everybody knows he's dead. Because he says it. He's asleep. Well, if he's asleep, okay, Thomas. For you, he's dead. For me, he's asleep. Let me tell you how slick the good Lord is. He gets there, and there's people that are crying. They have professional criers. So as a Jew, you pay somebody, they cry. That's how it works. Kind of like our our present-day wake. I digress. Okay. Okay. You pay them and they cry. This is why Christ gets upset. Because he's saying, Martha, Mary. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I'll tell you that. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead rise. You know that. If you'd been here, you wouldn't have died. Got it. Take me to the tomb. He's been to that tomb. That's Lazarus' property. He's been there for three years. He knows exactly where it is. You know why, why he wants somebody to take it? So nobody can say, Hey, you moved, the, you moved the rock. You went in there before everybody. So what does he do? He stands outside, 
It says, move the thing back. What does what Martha and Mary say? Oh, just for the record, just for the record, it was Martha that comes out first. Mary didn't want to come out. The complete opposite of the other one sit at the feet while the other one worked. Don't forget that. Martha does catch on. My brother and sister in Christ, what does she say? Take me to the tomb. Lord, he's been there four days. Got it. Move the rock. Lord, it's going to be a stench. And what does he say? Does he say, Lazarus, come out or come out? Right. He's got to call him by name because if not, everybody comes out the grave. It's the second coming. My brother in Christ, that's why you were named. Because you're accountable for your actions. I tell you what, for $10,000. <laughs> I have no money. $100,000. Bitcoin. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. How much you want Bitcoin now? Yeah, okay. For $100,000. What's the name of the couple in the Garden of Eden? Oh, God bless you. That's right, man and woman. Adam means ground, Adamah. Man and woman, they don't, she doesn't get her name until after they get kicked out of the garden. Then Adam resumes his name. That's why Jonah is a proper name. He dies in the whale. Y'all read the parable. Read the story. It's not a parable. Jonah's a real life guy. He dies in the whale. That's why the Lord uses him as an, ex as an example. Just like in time of Jonah descended to the dead, so will I. Why would you use a make-believe guy for you descended to the dead? Noah, people were married, getting married in the time of Noah, so will it be when I return. Why would you use a make-believe name? You wouldn't. Proper name means that person was alive and well. If they have no name, like the rich man, it means it didn't bode well for you. Man, now you're talking about good Samaritan, the man on the side of the road, the poor man, this man, that man, that's different, maybe parabolic. If a proper name is used, that's important. That's why he says, Lazarus, come out. And what's the first thing that he says? Take that mask off of him. Why? Because he's, he's in swaddling clothes. You know what's in, a, in the second miracle? He can't walk. So how did he come out of the tomb? His hands and feet are tied. If that doesn't get you to be a believer in Jesus Christ, <laughs> i got to tell you, if I had been there, I'd have said, oh, I'm out. That's it. That's the Messiah. God bless y'all. Because why? I mean, come on now. I mean, that's pretty impressive that he spoke to a dead man and he responded. I wonder what Lazarus told his sisters. Okay, now I'm going to have to die twice. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, but let me tell you how that's going to play out, right? My brother and sister Christ, so the tomb with our Savior Jesus Christ, that's why the face mask is placed somewhere else, right? That the rock had already been moved back. The debate among theologians is, did he leave the minute he was in the tomb to go to, to the... Remember now, the Jews believe hell... Is not like you and I think. You and I think gnashing of teeth. To them, it is Sheol, which is the realm of the dead. Abraham's bosom, purgatory. Oh, that's right. You don't believe in that. That's right. That's right. I forgot. I forgot. You know, even as a businessman, you ought to hope it's purgatory because you got another chance of making it. But I digress. And then there's hell itself. So the Jews believe Abraham's bosom. Where is him before Christ opens the pearly gates? Where's Elijah? John, where's the good thief? This day you'll be with me. Where's paradise? Ah, uh, can't be. Can't be heaven because the gates of heaven aren't open yet. Ah, the garden of paradise, the garden of Eden, Abraham's bosom. He's waiting there with Elijah, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all the great prophets until the good Lord opens the gates. When he opens the gates, then they go. Purgatory, you stay there till you remit because not everybody's going to, somebody's going to die with some sin on their soul. You can't get to heaven till you are perfectly clean. St. Paul to the Corinthians, you will stand before me and I will judge you. Everything you did with your body, good and evil. Why would you be telling me that if you're not going to judge me? Everybody's going to heaven. Haven't you heard, Lord? Every funeral I go to, they're in a better spot. Someday, someday, somebody's going to walk in and say, he didn't make it. I'm just telling you, he didn't make it. Right? True story. I go, and, and, and they meet, there's, uh, in Kentwood, the parlors are small, and there's only two, one to the right, one to the left. I am notorious for just going left. I don't read the book, because I'm thinking, what's the chance to have two people dying on the same day in Kentwood? Poop, I go left. I walk in, 
And once you walk in and you're wearing a dress, it's hard. I mean, everybody sees, right? Well, I'm in the wrong parlor. But I don't want to cut my losses because they're going to say, well, isn't he a piece of work? I said, Catholic priest guy, yeah, I see him, <laughs> whatever, right? So I decided, well, I might as well stay and pray because surely he's in a better spot, so I'm going to stay. So I start praying. Then I realize who it is, and it is the guy I went to see. But when I was listening to the talk, I remember thinking, that ain't him. That ain't no way. I remember, I actually remember kind of leak, looking to see, well, who's that in the box? Okay, okay, that, that ain't him, brother. I know everybody's in a better spot, but I don't think my boy's that close to it, okay? That's why I want you to pray. That's why I want you to have a funeral mass. I got to tell you, you better put it in your will. No money, no funeral, no check for you. Why? Because I'm going to tell you, you think your kid's going to do it? They're not. And I've watched, I've really watched fights break out. Mama wants a mass. Man, she's already... Man, I got, I mean, we got family, family man, good, good, come on, man, just, let's just bury it. Let's just have a service. Big mistake, because that mass offsets everything you know. So when you pray for a mass for your loved ones, the good Lord is using those masses after the fact against his judgment. That's why you need to have the masses prayed. So pay the $5, get over it, <laughs> sign up for it, and be done with it, and let me pray. I still pray for my dad every day. He's been going five years. He gets my first mass, and he gets the rosary every day. Why? Because I don't know where he sits. I'm not willing to gamble that he's in a better spot and to stop praying just to make me feel better. So i got to tell you, you come, if I do your, ser- your funeral service, you're going to hear me say, pray for their judgment that it goes well so that they can pray for you and I. Right? And do me a favor. Be careful. On the day I die, if one of you dogs says, oh, don't pray for him, he's in heaven. I'm going to haunt you (laughs) till it's your day. I'm going to sing 99 bottles of beer on the wall, and I can't sing a lick till you give up the ghost. That's what it's going to take to get me to home, okay? So does that answer your question in a long way around? (laughs) She probably forgot the question. I have no idea what he's talking about. It's already up. So tell me what is it you want to know about our faith? Because, yes, sir. Okay, divorce, you, the church does allow for divorce. It's not something they want, but you can still receive. However, here's the caveat, if you were seeing somebody else, then you cannot. That's the line of delineation. Other priests will tell you, and I'm just going to be honest and tell you where they sit. They're going to say, you can receive the Eucharist as long as you're not sleeping with somebody else. Well, what to Sam Hill is that? That is a sin. If you're seeing somebody else, then you shouldn't receive. Because the last time you told the good Lord, the one in that, when you were standing in front of him, this is the one. Now you're saying this, there's another one. Allow the church to get involved. I do a lot of annulments. Father JP and myself probably do 99% of all of them in the diocese. Allow me to help you with your annulment to move you on. Annulment is not Catholic answer to divorce. Your children are not something less than, oh, my God. He created all things good. Did you ever read it closely? When he created man, he said, very good. Right? It doesn't take 10 years. It doesn't cost $1,000. What I'm telling you is, yeah, it's hard. Allow the church to get involved and say, look, there's two types of marriages. There's the wedding to Cain. It's so important God be there. And then there's Herod's marriage. It's legal. He's king. I mean, he did marry his brother's wife, but, okay, morally questionable. It's either sacramental or natural. All the church is doing is saying that it might have started out sacramental. You might have been in the church like it's supposed to be, but there's something else took place beforehand. We can move it to now be a natural marriage. Do you know how many people of my friends have called me? Beard, I'm, <laughs> that's, okay. I'm, I'm a bee and a meat. I'm thinking, there is, no, there is no way you're coming through a meat, brother. You're either lost or you live here. What are you doing? Let's grab a beer. Oh, here, here we go, here we go. Right? You come talking about an annulment. Right? Where'd you get married? Vegas. Oh, Elvis is alive and well. Can I tell you that, my boy? You know the little white chapel? I think it's, it's several thousand a month. Get married. 
I got my, I got my buddies' names in there, I can promise you, right? So if you are, if you're divorced, you can receive, but if you're seeing somebody else, that, that's the signal to land the plane, right? That's what that is. So does that answer your question? Okay, well, let me just ask you, how many were inside the church? Okay, well, then that's grounds for an annulment. You didn't do it R-I-T-E, didn't do it through the right. So can you receive? Yes. But by my brother, whatever you may sit in the world, yes, you can receive. But let's get those cleared up before you go any further, okay? Don't trust me, you don't have the record. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. It's the best two for one sale going. Um, the good Lord, St. Augustine, St. Anselm, St. Thomas Aquinas say that when you pray for a soul to, to mitigate what they owe, they will pray for your intention. And since they've seen the face of God, they did on Judgment Day, they pray with greater intensity, so he allows them to pray for your intention. So therefore, I'm, I don't, there's not one prayer I pray without going through purgatory. Stop looking for an English word in a book written in Greek. That's insane. Oh, Father, here, show me where it is purgatory written in a book. Oh, it's right next to the word Trinity. Oh, that's right. That's not in there either. The book's written in Greek. Stop looking for it. Every, Philippians 2, if you're looking for a place where it speaks of purgatory, Philippians 2, every knee must bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. You've been a knee in heaven because you're before the throne of God. You've been a knee on earth because you want to be. Nobody's been in a knee in hell. If you had been, you wouldn't be there to begin with. Padre Pio says, hell is in the center of the earth and purgatory is just under the surface, which would correspond to Philippians 2, every knee must bend under the earth. Ma'am? Yes, I'm a big fan of the bridge of prayer. That's the one you pray for a year. What is it? Oh, there's a 12-year plan? I don't know if I got the time, so I kind of jumped to the one-year plan. I don't even, <laughs> wow, 12 years? Oh, here's the skinny, just so you know, right? St. Luke speaks to it. God is a parable, right? God uses no names. He comes back. His chief steward has been doing things improper. His chief steward goes to this person and says, how much? He said, I owe him 80 bushels, make it 40. Goes the next guy, how many gallons? He owe 100 gallons, make it 50. What's the first words the good Lord says to him in returns? You acted prudently in the ways of the world. That's not the first words you and I would have said to him. He's saying you acted the ways of the world because I'm about to call you home and judge you, and then you're going to rely on them to get you out. Purgatory, intercessory prayers. That's where it comes from, Right? Right? So you got to make sure. Pray for the souls. There's not one prayer I pray that does not go to a soul. Every rosary, I may take each bead and goes to a different person. My dad gets the whole rosary. Right? My dad and I just, you know, we have a deal. And the deal was he was supposed, he was supposed to come back and tell me when he made it. Okay? But I haven't heard, so I continue to pitch. Right? I will say this. Sister Dulcie called me at 3 o'clock in the morning because she, the woman, God, I, I don't sleep. She sleeps worse than me. She's in adoration, God-awful hours. And she called one morning, it's 2.30, 3 o'clock. Chipper's, you know, that's her. Father, what are you doing? Sleeping. You know? <laughs> she said, man, I don't have time. I have to get back to the chapel. I've got a prayer. I've got a long list. I've got to go. Uh, Papa told me to tell you, his face shines upon your day. God bless you. I've got to go. So I still pray for him every day, though, right? And then he could pass it on to who he likes. Huh? Three years ago. Somebody had their hand up. Yes, ma'am. No. No, otherwise, they, they, there's no way to mitigate what they owe. So while they're in purgatory, but they can't pray for themselves. Right? No, it's, there's seven levels according to PO, and then I, I've got I've to let you take a break. The closest level is in heaven. The great purgatory is closer to hell. The demons can still torment you, but they can't get to you. The, left, the last level is mostly priest and religious. The more you know, the more you're accountable, right? And so 
nobody can pray for you in the bottom level. You gotta just mitigate you what you owe. And once you get to the next level, then if you want two great books to read, one's called The Unpublished Manuscript of Purgatory. Unpublished, very thin. It's a, it's a dialogue between two nuns, two sisters who are not biological, one in purgatory, one in out. And then there's another book called Get Me Out of Here. It's a great book, right? right? Purgatory is a great gift because without it, none of us make it. You're not going to die walking out the confessional. Thank you, Lord. Right? <laughs> Can you see a little chalk outline where you're standing? I'm thinking, uh-uh, I ain't coming out. Yep, I'm done. All right. Man, let me give you a quick blessing, right? In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Most holy and gracious Father, watch over them, guide them. Give them peace in their heart, mind, and soul. Protect them from the evil one, and may your face and the mother forever be upon them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Man, thank you. Look, take a break. Walk around. See the campus, right? Thank you for coming. You're going to love listening to us. It's fantastic.